Rector wants all to be in the chapel now. With the habit? Yes, with the habit. Oh no, all my habits are gone for worship. Rector wants all to be in the chapel now. Right now? Yes. I have to go to the market. Nothing doing. He wants all to be in the chapel immediately. Who is coming? I heard that Vice Provincial Father Bernard Pereira is coming to speak to the fathers and the brothers. Good news or bad news? I will tell you after the announcement. He's coming. You all look so scared. Don't worry, the world is not going to end. You look amused. This is the spirit of Alphonsus. <laughs> I have an important announcement to make. Our Indian unit of the Redemptorists will no longer be a wise province. From now on, it is going to be called the province of Bangalore. We have just received a letter from Father General, and I would like to read it to you. The Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, established in India for several decades, has developed successfully, especially in recent years. And now considering the hope of further growth, we decide, we hereby declare the wise province of Bangalore, the province of Bangalore. Signed by Aryovaldo Amaral, CSSR, General Superior, Rome, 15th August, 1972. I was in the novitiate that year Ours was the last batch of novices in the Vice Province and ours also was the first batch of novices in the province of Bangalore. My dear brothers, on the occasion of the Golden Jubilee of the Bangalore province, I am glad to welcome Father R. Vincent, who has been in the congregation in the province all these 50 years to share his experience with us. It would be great to hear from him how our province has grown. Father Vincent, welcome and thank you for sparing your precious time with us to share your experience with our brothers. Thank you, Father Gio. For your welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. Yes. Well, brothers, 50 years is not a short period of time. We have come a long way. We have expanded our presence in India and we have undertaken many ministries. It's truly been 50 years of redemptive grace. Let me take you back to 1972. Dear brothers, in the year 1972 was a historical year, not only for us, Redemptorists, but it was an important year for uh, India and uh, Sri Lanka. And that same year, 15th of August 1972, India was celebrating its uh, Silver Jubilee of Independence. A year ago, in 1971, there was a war between India and Pakistan and ultimately Pakistan surrendering to India. And in the following year, 2nd of July 1972, an agreement was made between India and um, Pakistan. It was called the famous uh, Simla Agreement. And both the countries were asked to work out ways and means of maintaining peace in the region. And that time, 
Vindra Gandhi was the Prime Minister of our country and V.V. Giri was the President of India. In the south, the small little island nation changed its name from Ceylon to Sri Lanka and also had a new constitution. It was in this background, the new province of Bangalore was established. At that time, there were 12 communities, Ambala and Lucknow in the north, Kolkata in the east, Mumbai and Goa in the west, Walaram, Tenali, Madurai, Trivandrum, and two communities in Bangalore, Mount St. Alphonsus and Sadhupadesa, all in the south. And there were also two communities in Sri Lanka, Kandy and Colombo. The new province had 126 members, professed members. In terms of ministries, they undertook ministries in, and preached in eight languages, regional languages apart from English. Now for the first time, the unit was in the hands of Indian team of Redemptors in office. Back then, we were just one unit. The province of Bangalore covered all of India and Sri Lanka, including members of both Latin and Zero Malabar Rite. Today, we are four units. Over the years, three units have grown out of the province of Bangalore. The first one to be established was the region of Colombo with two houses in Sri Lanka on the 14th of January 1975 then on the 1st of February 1992 the then named vice province of Alwe which comprises the members of the Siro Malabar Rite in Kerala was formed. Today the unit has become the independent province of Liguri. Later on, on the 14th of April 1999, the western region was called the Vice Province of Magella, with houses situated in the western parts of India, including Goa, Maharashtra and Bangalore, was formed. The province of Bangalore has 132 members and 29 communities. Apart from the communities that were there in 1972, since then we have formed many other communities. Tehapur in West Bengal, Pandripani and Kemtatoli in Jharkhand, Kalunga in Orissa, Pedamanapuram and Munagalapalli in Andhra Pradesh, Hyderabad in Telangana, Chennai, Kotagiri, Anjukote, Trichy, Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu. And in Bangalore, we have the parish community of uh, Holy Ghost and then Ligori Bhavan, St. Gerard, and uh, two communities in uh, Kenya. So this is how the province has grown to this day. Father, as Redemptorists, traditionally we are involved in preaching parish missions and retreats. But we are also involved in some other ministries. Could you please highlight for us some of the other ministries, Father? It's true that traditionally we have been known in India for our parish mission and retreats, which are still popular in many parts. In the 1940s, the Irish pioneers started preaching missions in English. However, we have a great number of redemptors taking up ministry in uh, regional languages like Tamil, Sinhalese, Telugu, Konkani, Marathi, Bengali, Malayalam, Kannada, Hindi and Sadri in this period. And again, we just did not preach in regional languages alone, but the very message was colored by our understanding of redemption as the liberation of the entire human person, with special emphasis on the Christian message that includes working for justice and peace. Caring for the poor has always been a top priority for the redemptress. Beginning with pastoral and spiritual care, leading up to the full liberation of the human person as spelt out by our constitutions. While most of us in the province have worked to the welfare of the poor and marginalized within the context of a parish or a community or other 
essential structure, there have been some who went a step further, immersing themselves into the very life of the oppressed. They took up the cause of the poor in the light of social justice and human rights. We had Father Thomas Kocheri, who worked for the rights of the traditional fishermen. We have Father James Chakalakal, who even today works among the indigenous tribes of Why Not Kerala in Goa. Redemptors such as Father Desmond D'Souza and others who worked for the rights of traditional fishermen and domestic workers too. Every time there has been a natural calamity like the devastating cyclone in Andhra Pradesh or Sri Lankan Tamil refugee crisis in Madurai, the deadly tsunami that hit the coastal belt of Tamil Nadu and Kerala in 2004, or the recent pandemic that has shaken the entire country and the world. Redemptorists have responded to the situation with Christian charity and missionary zeal. Father, my parish priest is very active in charismatic movement. And also he told me that the Redemptorists were pioneers in the charismatic movement. Could you tell us something about it? In the early part of the 70s, the Catholic charismatic group was setting foot in India. At that time, a few Redemptorists joined the movement and contributed to its growth. Many Redemptorists contributed to the growth of this new renewal movement in the church, such as Father Joe Morgan, Father A.J. Francis, Father Joe, John Hoy, Edward Cleary, Franklin Lobo, Francis Pinto and Gino Hendricks. Father Gino would later on go on to become the national chairperson of the charismatic renewal movement in India. Not just the charismatic movement. Redemptors have cared for families in various movements. We were responsible for the spread of the marriage encounter movement in India. Father Peter D'Souza, while studying counseling in the US, had joined the marriage encounter movement and on his return to India, he conducted many, many weekends with an American couple who worked for its growth here. So many redemptors did their marriage encounter weekends and some even joined in as team priests to give weekends. In recent years, Redemptors have all accompanied other family movements like the Christian family movement and the Couples for Christ and so on. Father, we call this classroom as Rich Classroom. I have heard we had a kind of an institute here. What was it? You see, we Redemptors are known for our homiletics. From the beginning, one of the services we rendered to the church in India, along with preaching retreats for priests and religious, is to give homiletic courses. As the demand for this grew, the chapter of 1974 decided to start a dedicated institute to train priests in communication and homiletics. It was called REACH, Redemptorist Academy for Communication and Homiletics. For a brief, brief period, REACH functioned from this place in Mount St. Alphonsus. It created a big impact on the formation of priests and religious in India. Over the years, Redemptorists have been conducting homiletic courses for seminarians and priests, and still it is our Forte. Hello, Vijay and Sandeep. Hi, Father. Nice to see you. How Same are you, here. Sandeep? Nice. Hi, nice to see you. How is that that you are here? We are having a shoot of uh, Aging Gracefully, so we just came oh, for the shoot. Wonderful. How about Welcome. you, Father? I came here for the assembly and the prefect asked me to talk to the brothers oh, about nice. the province. <laughs> so I'm here. Hello, brothers, they are here now. Perhaps you can ask the two of them about uh, media ministry. Okay? Yeah. 
Yeah. Take a cup of coffee here. Yeah. Oh yes. Dear brothers, I think it's a wonderful time for you to ask some questions about the media ministry that both of them are involved in. And it'd be nice, Father, if we can enlighten the yeah. students. Uh, before that, I would like to share with you a bit about the media ministry that was by the province many, many years ago. Way back in 1965, Father A.J. Francis, one of the pioneers, he produced two gramophone records, no, and Mother of Perpetual Help in Tamil, uh, sung by P. Sushila and V.M. Srinivas. That song is still being, uh, you know, sung around the place. Vidai vidada sahaya mata, ina illa deva mata. After that, Father A.J. Francis also produced a, a, a movie on the icon of the perpetual help, which was translated to, into many languages, no? Then we have also other conferers who were involved for the Anjali Topiris from Sri Lanka, who produced devotional hymns in Tamil. Then we have this Breaking the Word magazine, that goes back to 1968. It was initiated by Father Gino Hendrix. Gino Hendrix, no, which is still in circulation. No, I mean, just imagine it started in 1968. No, and uh, thanks to all the conferences who were involved in this uh, bulletin, it goes abroad also. And then we have uh, other conferences in the province who are now interested in media young conference and they are also producing sermons and uh, songs in different languages like Sadri, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, you know, and in Hindi also. So this is how the media ministry is going on in our province. But of late, what's being done? We have the right persons here. So perhaps you can ask these two of them and they will be able to enlighten you. Yes, Father, when we started live streaming, it was the beginning of the pandemic and the churches were closed. People had no access to the sacraments. But the Redemptorist Media Center began much before that, in December 2010, when Father Charles Vijay and a few other confreres initiated it with the intention of hosting the province website and also providing audiovisual resources for evangelization and faith formation of adults. And we have come a long way. We are going to reach 50,000 subscribers on our uh, English YouTube channel. And we create contents for various uh, age groups, for uh, children, youth, for families, and also for the elderly. Um, apart from the English channel, we also have uh, YouTube channels in Kannada, Tamil, uh, Hindi, and most recently in Telugu as well. Oh, it's time already for class. <laughs> Father, what about our education ministry? Even though we don't have many schools, still we have few of them, right? Yeah, brothers, the principle is the same. Traditionally, uh, redemptors are not called run schools, you know. Though, uh, according to the pastoral need of the place, we have responded to that, you know. For example, we have a school, Alfonso School here in Bangalore. We have a school in Chembur that was meant for the poor children. And then now, 1960, Father Martin Kushnan started a school, boarding school for poor children in Bolaram in Andhra Pradesh. Now we have schools in Kemptatoli and in Kalunga. And then we also have tuition centers in uh, Pedamanapuram and in uh, Munagalapalli. So we are only responding to the need of the place, uh, pastoral need. No? That is why we have few schools in our province. Hello, Hello, Anthony Charles. Yes, nice sir. to see you after a long time. Nice to see you, Father. How are you, Father? How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah. Father, yes. I, I heard that uh, you're here to take some classes for the yeah, students, theologians. Yeah, the theologians. provincial asked me to uh, brief something about the history of the province. Okay. So I'm here with the students, no? Okay. okay. Just for a few days, no? Yeah, I'm very happy to see you, Father. Yeah, I have just come here to ask you a favor. Why don't you come? to Sadhu Pradesh and take some classes for our students. Okay, Father, we'll fix up the time. Yes, I'll yes. be happy to come and share Please, with you, Father. Yeah, it's but pleasure. before that, I want you to tell me about your experience in Kenya. I heard you were there for a few years, no? Yes, Father. A few years? Yes. Yeah. I was sent to Kenya in 2016. Okay. And uh, I was the formator there for the orientation year students. Okay. But the Kenya mission began way back in 1990s. Okay. And it was on 17th June 1990. Yeah. The three of our conference, Father Patrick Romeo, yeah. 
Father Joseph Nanam and Stopo. Father Alberto Stopo uh. were commissioned to begin a foundation in Kenya. And the first house was established uh, in a village called uh, Iruma in the okay, diocese okay. of Meru, okay. where we have a parish and a school. Then after that, a formation house yeah. in Karen, in the outskirts of uh, Nairobi city in Kenya, okay. which hosts both the philosophers and okay. theologians. Okay. And now we have also taken up a parish in Kinungi, oh. just one and a half hour drive from okay. the city of uh, Nairobi. Okay. And with these two parishes, one in Iruma mm. and in Kinungi, mm. and the Formation House, mm. now we have uh, 12 uh, redemptorist priests serving oh, in different parts of Kenya. Oh, I see. And we have some students in both theology and philosophy. See you. Excellent. Thank so you. please do Thank come and so visit much. us. Yeah, okay. So you see, it's been a long journey, 50 years of redemptive grace. Many leaders have shaped the province as it is today with their unique leadership styles, beginning with Father Matthew Hickey, William Handley, James Connolly, Peter Ward, Bernard Pereira, Varki Vidyatil, Peter D'Souza, Jose Fonseca, Gino Hendricks, Xavier Sanjeevi, Paul Parangat, Arulananda Mies, and now Father Edward Joseph. The province is indebted to all of them. Thank God for each and every one who has dedicated their life to the growth and development of the province. Today, redemptorists in the province are involved in many specialized apostolates, such as ministry to the migrants, youth and prisoners, as well as counseling, spiritual direction, the apostolate of the pen, music ministry and media ministry. We also run three retreat centers to foster holistic formation in Bangalore, Trivandrum and Pandripani. As we celebrate 50 years of redemptive grace, we thank God for all the blessings especially our departed conference, benefactors, lay collaborators. We are grateful that our charism of following Jesus in the way of St. Alphonsus Liguri still attracts many young and not so young to join us. We pray for more vocations to our Rims family as professed members and as lay collaborators together we are called to be missionaries of hope in the footsteps of the Redeemer.